everybody. Welcome back to Rogue Country Crafts and welcome if you are new. Today's video, we are going inside as promised. So we're going inside to see the raw space of what we are dealing with before the actual renovation takes off. I'm sharing with you a DIY cement slab that my grandson Derek and his daddy Steven put together for me behind the little house. you're new here, welcome. Please consider sticking around. Hit that subscribe button down below. If you're returning guys, hey, thanks so much for coming back and checking out yet another one of our videos. I'm really excited to share with you today. So stick around. Okay, so there's one and a half. See it? Yeah. And there's three and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we cut this, we know that each piece each end is going to be at least one and a half inches, right? Mm -hmm. So, if we want this to be the inside to be six feet long, but it's going to have two one and a half inch sections, how long does it have to be? Six feet, and that's one, two, three. 6 at 3 and that's where we want it. I'm cutting on this side. So two cuts out of one board? Yeah, that's why I bought three. Cool. Come up to where it says hip valve. Take your hand on the other side of it and push it all the way up. Or you can do that. They're cool. Here. Good? You measured. Mm-hmm. You measured from the end of the board, right? Yeah. And then you got the length that you need it to be. Mm -hmm. And then you measured one and a quarter because the blade and the um, fence on that saw mm -hmm. is one and a quarter inches. Yeah. Do you go past your line at six and three inches or do you go before it when you put your... Grab the saw. Don't way. pull that trigger. Okay, so that's the fence that's one and a quarter. Okay, it is one and a quarter from here to here. Okay. You want this on six and three quarters. Got it. So the line is before it. So before the, it. Yeah, so okay. the blade, if it was after it, you would have a lot longer of a cut. Okay. Push the board if you got to. Push the board a little bit. There you go. Keep it against it. Pull the trigger. Keep it against it. Pull the trigger. 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 Pull the trigger
three feet. There's three feet, there's the two inches. Push it, push it, push it, push it!
And you guys, I cannot express to you how excited I am to have this part of the project finished. I'm also so, so proud of Derek and his daddy, Stephen, for doing this for me. In our concrete, we laid some pennies that represent birthdays and anniversaries in our family. I can't wait to add more pennies as life goes on. Stay tuned because we are going inside of the tiny house next. We will be going inside momentarily. Okay guys, so you know me, I like to share real life and this is real life at the moment. This is what the outside of the little house looks like or actually looked like until we made a cleanup. I have some decor that I'm going to have to store away. We're going to utilize part of my office space to make a closet in order to keep some of my outdoor decor stored away nice and safely. But really, this has become a catch-all. The yard utensils and things that we use outside to cut the grass, that's all kept there as well. This is going to require a huge cleanup. But I really like that it's got a big overhang like porch area and I'm really looking forward to utilizing that um, especially when I'm working and maybe taking a break and getting away from the computer. I really like the brickwork and how rustic this looks outside but guys this is the inside. This is what I promised to show you. We have stored everything under the sun in this space while we've lived here for the past five plus years. Uh, this is what it looks like inside and I did give you guys a sneak peek of that um, in my last video. So if you haven't uh, seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it here for you. I promise that is not a body, <laughs> it is plastic, but what a mess, right? And this is space that was just not being utilized at all. So my husband and I and my son, we got together and we started really cleaning out the space. I want to show you it has a concrete floor and it has some damage that was done from bugs. We live in the country, guys. This is old barn wood that is not staying in the space. Um, so that is something that is definitely going to go. If that was something you thought I was going to keep, you can go ahead and mark that off your list. It is going away. Um, the ceiling in here had to be replaced at one point a portion of it because we did have some hail damage and storm damage to this little house and we've since put a new roof on that as well but i'm giving you the real look guys this is really what the condition of the space is or was until we got started on it there is a furnace on that back wall like i was showing you before and talking about in the beginning of this video there is um, just a lot of things that we had to take out of here and you know this was a daunting task and this is why it really kind of took me a little while to realize that this could be done it can be done you just have to really stop and you know give yourself some time to put together a plan but this is the furnace i'm having somebody come and give me um you know an update to this it's really going to be up and running before uh winter time so i'm i'm really excited that that is going to happen so this is what it looked like guys until we started cleaning everything out and also guys that light fixture it's gone we're getting rid of that too it does have a 50 amp service um, my son started taking everything out of the house and now this is really kind of the look as to what the current status is for this little tiny house. So I'm showing you the beadboard, you know, ceiling. Uh, I have parts of the wall that is missing. We are actually taking this property or this part of the property light and bright. Um, you can see here I've got hornets that decided to live in my window sill. Um, this is country living, guys. Uh, there is even a snake skin that we found in the wall, and I just gave myself the heebie jeebies talking about it, but that's real life. So, um, yeah, but anyhow, this is part of the ceiling that had been replaced. It does not, I mean, it matches, but not color wise in terms of 
the rest of the ceiling and you can see where my contractor kind of just stopped instead of taking it full length to make it more seamless. But that's okay guys because paint fixes a lot of problems and that is what we are going to be doing in this part of this little house. Um, we're taking everything light and bright like I said. So we're going to be patching the concrete floor before we put a coating on it. We're using an epoxy coating on this floor. I'm excited to get that uh, taken care of and also brighten that up. But that's, you know, a little bit of work that's going to be done. We are going to take you along on this journey. We are going to be sharing these videos out with you guys just so you can see. And so I'm getting as, as best as I can in the space right now. That refrigerator will also stay. I mean, you can't have a home office if you don't have the ability to run to the fridge real quick and grab yourself, you know, maybe an iced coffee or whatever. And I'm planning on doing a, a mini coffee bar in the space as well. Um, so the floor is concrete, the walls will be drywall, and then everything is going light and bright. Um, and when that happens, I'll be bringing you back in so that you can see the contrast between what it is now and what it will be. I really love this brick back wall, but the furnace lives right in the center of it. And this space is actually going to be divvied up between my home office where I do my everyday job and then part of it will also be a YouTube studio so that I can create content and then also do my video editing and what have you. If you guys have any ideas as to what we can do with this furnace to temporarily cover it while I'm either filming or working in the summertime, um, give me some ideas, drop them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think I should do in order to cover up that furnace and still keep it functional for winter time. So whatever goes there is going to have to be temporary. Here's a better look at the damage that we had. I want to say that this was termites, but the man that we bought the house from said probably more likely it was carpenter bees. And that makes sense because we did have an infestation of carpenter bees the first summer that we lived here. They were in this tiny house. I could not come in here at all because I have a major allergy to bees. My husband took care of getting rid of them. So this is the back of the door that comes into the space and it is also done in the barn wood and it was a custom built door it is a custom size i'm probably leaving the outside of this door that you know when you close it this is what you see from the outside that will likely stay the same but inside everything's going light and bright to begin with before i determine what colors i'm going to actually use and what um style I'm going to be decorating in. They had wall-to-wall -wall carpet, believe it or not, in this space at one time. I'm coming up to that. Um, guys, I, I think I'm going to cut right here because this is where the snake skin is and I don't want to scare anybody. Okay, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Okay, everybody, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the raw space and what you think, what direction in terms of decor we will be going for here in Row Country. You've seen the outside of the building a little bit. Do you think I'm going to be matching that and going more of a rustic feel? Or do you think I'm gonna to return to my country roots and kind of take that a little farmhouse, maybe a little cottage? Who knows, right? Stick around, guys. Put a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I will be letting you know soon if you're right. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.